All right, so part four of our analysis of the uh, academic paper on arbitraging Social Security to increase your retirement income. Now, I'm going to take it deeper than what these guys did. So the, uh, the John Chauvin et al. paper that you can find through the NBER, uh, National Bureau of Economic Research, and it's free, uh, talks about the, the uh, using Social Security as a cheap annuity relative to buying your own annuity. Every time Social Security is cheaper, certainly cheaper than retail annuities and also cheaper than annuities that you can get from your 401k if you annuitize as opposed to rolling out your money and then going to a private company. So just remember, Social Security every time is the cheapest annuity you can buy. It's not even close. Not, that's simply not debatable. So as we're thinking about it, it's like, well, what happens if instead of John, remember John last time, if you didn't follow him last time, uh, the last video, go back, because I talked about John versus Jane. What happens if John, instead of taking an annuity to generate the excess income he needed because he took Social Security early, what happens if he just pulled the money out from his portfolio instead? What would happen versus John versus Jane in that regard? All right, so we're going to talk about that here. Now, the paper didn't talk about that. So this is just my own thought process on it. And, uh, and for me, it's, what, 9.30 East Coast time. I've never done a video this late, but I can't. I've just been thinking about this, so i got to get it out there. So if you're in California, hope you're liking this. Hawaii, I hope you're liking this. And folks on the East Coast, hopefully you'll get this when you wake up bright-eyed and bushy-tailed on a Monday morning. All right, so welcome to Heritage Wealth Planning, the place you come to learn pretty much everything about retirement planning. Now, I don't know it all, you don't know it all, but combined, we can come up with some pretty good solutions. All right, so let me get my trusty uh, PVC pipe. So remember, the scenario is, or was, John and Jane, John took Social Security early at 66, and because he took it at 66, his monthly payment was 20, or his annual payment was $25,000 a year. But he needed $27,000 a year to live on, so he had to make up that gap of $2,000 a year. The last video, we showed him making up a gap by purchasing an inflation-indexed income annuity for about $44,000 or so. All right, in that case, uh, Jane was much better off, and we'll talk about that in just a second. But essentially, he of his $100,000 portfolio, he used $45,000 of that to buy an inflation-adjusted annuity, and that way he never ran out of money because Social Security and his inflation-adjusted annuity were both adjusted for inflation. Jane, on the other hand, she waited to take Social Security for a year until she's 67. Her $25,000 of guaranteed Social Security, because you have the delayed earnings credits, went up to, 20, uh, to 27000 So she just needed $27,000 as her income need to pull from her portfolio that first year. And then after that, Social Security covered everything. So Jane was about, what, seven five eight thousand dollars $8,000 ahead of John from first year. That was the arbitrage that by deferring Social Security... Uh, you can make an $8,000 gain. Now, if you factor that over time, at a, I forgot what interest rate I used, I think 6%, uh, Jane was about $25,000 ahead of John just by that one simple scenario with less risk, actually, because Social Security is less risky than a private annuity company. All right, so in this case, Jane, again, uh, she because she didn't take Social Security until year uh, two, when she's 67, she had to pull 27000 from her $100,000 portfolio. So the following year, she had twenty seven. She had uh, uh, 73000 whereas John uh, will have 100000 because John is not taking, uh, he did not buy that annuity this time. Instead, he's taking 2000 from his portfolio each and every year to cover uh, the, the deficit, he needs 27,000 bucks, Social, gives him, Social Security gives him 25, so he's got to make the $2,000 a year up, and he's taking it from his portfolio. Now, in this 2,000 year, is, uh, is and we're going to adjust it for inflation, and we're saying inflation's 3%, all right? So 2,000 a year is 2,060, the falling year, and then I think it's like 2,000, let's see, what is it, <coughs> 2,121 the next year, all the way up till the year 20 is $3,507. So the three percent inflation uh, increases, you know, steadily, steadily, steadily at a, a decent enough clip. That in by year twenty, he's not pulling two thousand from it to make up the difference. He's pulling three thousand five hundred and seven dollars to make up the difference. Again, Social Security is adjusted, so Social Security for John and Social Security for the Jane are working at the same clip. All right, so that's our two scenarios. All right, so Jane just says, look, after the first year I pulled my 27000 out, I'm done. Social Security covers everything. I don't have any concern whatsoever. And if I can get a certain rate of withdrawal in my portfolio, what would it be worth? And let's go over here and I'll show you. So if she only gets 2% a year, that 73000 will grow to 108000 after 20 years. 
That 73,000 will grow to 159,000 after four, if she only got 4% a year. So you can see where we're going, pretty simple. Not touching the money, 73,000 just sits there year over year, gets 2% or 4%, 159,000 at 4%, 234,000 at six, and 340,000 at eight, all right? And that's at 8%. So Jane says, I got 73,000 bucks, I'm not touching it. For the next 20 years, if I can get 8% a year, I'll have or $340,000 in there by you know, maybe the day I die. And that way, I'll leave that to my heirs. John, on the other hand, said, well, look, I think I can do better because I'm only going to take 2000 a year the first year, 2060 the next, 2100 something the next. But Jane took a significant amount right out of the, right out of the top here, 73000 I'm just pulling 2000 2100 2200 each and every year. I think I can do better than Jane. Again, that is adjusted for that 3% inflation. But here's the issue. After uh, 20 years, John only has at 2% of that portfolio. So again, 100,000 is growing at 2% a year, but he's still taking $2,000 a year out minus a 3% inflation. So inherently, because inflation is higher than his rate of return, after <coughs> 20 years, he's only gonna have $83,000 left in his portfolio. So Jane has 25,000, yeah, about 20, was that, 20, uh, 17, yeah, uh, yeah, about 25,000 more than John does at that 2% rate clip. 4%, now it's starting to get a little bit closer, he has 139,000, so again, $100,000 his portfolio, it's growing at 4% rate clip, that 2,000 a year that he needs to pull out to complement his Social Security, because the Social Security is not enough, that's increasing at 3%, so inherently he'll have more because his rate of return is more than his inflation. That's taking the portfolio out. So after 20 years, he'll have 139,000 in this portfolio where Jane will have 159,000. So he closed the gap by 5,000 bucks. Before she had 25,000 more, now she's only got 20,000 more. All right, at 6% a year, John's got 221,000 in his portfolio, and Jane had 234,000. So here is 13,000 difference. And then finally, year 20 at 8%, John finally beats Jane. He has 342,000, and Jane has $340,000. Now that's assuming a linear rate of return across the board, but in the three of the four scenarios, Jane was, uh, was ahead, and a couple times significantly ahead, 25,000, 20,000 and then here's uh, 13,000. So, you know, again, that's pretty significant. You're in the five figures. And only in the last time was John ahead of Jane in terms of having more in his portfolio than she did, and only because he got a higher rate of return. Now, if you change it for inflation being 2%, uh, that'd make John look better. If you change it for inflation at 4%, that'd make John look worse because inflation is eating this right here, but it's not touching Jane whatsoever. So the higher inflation, the worse will make John. The lower inflation, the higher will make John, uh, the better make John look. But again, only at 8% a year, did he get a better rate of return than Jane when he when they both died, essentially 20 years hence. And that's the difference. And don't, don't forget too, Jane's got no risk. I mean, everything to her is guaranteed by the government. You can't get a more risk-free income than a government a pension. You just can't because the federal government is on the hook. There's no riskier or, or safer uh, investment you can make than guaranteed from the government. John, on the other hand, is relying on his portfolio to give him a rate of return to offset the increases in inflation he has to have. And the portfolio has got to be you know, stocks. It could be CDs. CDs are less risk or more risky than uh, government bonds, though. And Social Security is even better than a government bond. Because Social Security is literally an obligation from the federal government to pay you back. There's just no getting around that. So the riskiest, uh, the risk-free thing is Social Security, government bonds will be next. CDs at 2% are more risky than government bonds because CDs are the FDIC, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, or if it's a credit union, the NCUA. Not, I mean, yes, they're not likely to go kaput, but just like the PBGC, the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation, uh, at the end of the day, there is some backstop from the federal government, but trust me, uh, the government bonds are 100% ex explicitly backed by the feds. These things have the essentially the implicit, if not explicitly the explicit guarantee of the government, but the government bonds are literally guaranteed. So you can't get much uh, riskier, uh, risk-free than the government bond. And so it just goes to show you though, at the end of the day, taking Social Security early, 
unless you get a high rate of return, it doesn't make sense. Now, now there's a whole bunch of things going on here, and I get that. I mean, if you get an eight percent return, you got ten percent return. If inflation is lower. Um, you know, what if Social Security goes bankrupt? Social Security is going to cut back. All that stuff. I get all. There's all kinds of risks here, but still, the default mechanism, in my opinion, would be to defer. Just based on these numbers alone, based on the arbitrage study that we looked at before, I think the default would be deferred, and I think you should consider that as well. Open up, hear your ideas, thoughts, concerns, comments on this. Again, this will be the last we do on this video, uh, this on this uh, paper. We'll talk about other papers going forward, but love to hear comments. So don't forget to subscribe, comments, thumbs up. The whole thing helps me a lot. And uh, if you have any suggestions on videos, let me know that too. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.